Hello everyone. Some of you already met me, but for those who just joined, my name is Yulia Zazula and I design IDEs based on IntelliJ platform. In case someone forgot, this is how an IDE looks like. And the main part of it is of course the editor, where you write code, with a lot of smart stuff, like completion, refactoring, navigations, and others. But you not only write code in the IDE, sometimes uh, you need to build the product that you are developing, or debug the code when there is some problem. Starts to look quite complicated, right? Well, this is an IntelliJ idea. An IDE for Java, which is 19 years old and has more than 2 million monthly active users. And it's not only, um, and it's not just an IDE for Java, but also a platform for 11 more IDEs, which are designed for different programming languages, such as Python, Ruby, PHP, and others. Even Google created their Android Studio based on our platform, which is really great, and all sums up to more than 8 million active users every month. So, 8 million users each month use our platform as their main professional tool, and use it every day. So what do you think happens when we try to change something on a tool that is so actively used? For example, we wanted to change something as simple as the main toolbar. We didn't plan anything drastic, only a visual update of the icons here. Uh, you can see how the toolbar looked before. It is quite outdated, has a lot of small details, which lead to a lot of clutter, and icons are quite inconsistent. So we decided to change it. It gained a more modern look, where we unify the shape, style, and remove any unnecessary clutter. And it seems like a win for all sides. Well, it wasn't. Users were not happy with the change at all. When we posted a blog post about this simple toolbar update, it quickly became a discussion which is still one of the top 20 most discussed blog posts in JetBrains ever. And uh, the users actually didn't stop there. They also reported it back as an issue. This issue then became one of the 10 top voted issues in our tracker. All this over a simple visual change of icons. But this actually makes sense. This is a tool that those software engineers use and see every day. So over this big reaction, we actually realized that to us it was a simple visual change, but for our users, it was a change in habits. By changing these icons, we were breaking someone's daily habits. So if it was that dramatic to change a toolbar, how do we update and redesign the product with such a dedicated and passionate user base? What if we want to redesign uh, something more complicated or even introduce new features? Or what if we want to change uh, which alters the position of elements? I will share with you today the steps that we took when we decided to update an interface on the platform, the commit process. This is what commit originally looked like. You can see here that the developer can review any of the changes they made, select them, and uh, summarize the required, uh, summarize them in the message box. So the team can understand uh, what the changes were and the reasons behind them. For the time being, uh, this layout worked pretty well. But the problem was that, that uh, this is a model dialog, which means uh, that it doesn't allow you to switch between the dialog box and the main idea frame. And this is not ideal, because uh, you might want uh, to see the original code alongside uh, the code that you've changed, or use any other features from the IDE, like rerunning tests, for example. And we could just remove the, the modality of the dialog box, but we decided uh, that switching between the different boxes creates information load and opens, opens up other issues. So we decided to introduce new interface. Instead of a separate dialog box, we embedded uh, the commit function as a bottom pane into the main IDE frame itself. You can see here all the uh, same elements as before, 
list of files, commit message box, but we also added a change preview, uh, which was uh, really requested uh, by the users. Well, this is a bit changed. Not only did we change visual habits by changing the position of elements, previously all of uh, the elements were in the center of the screen and now all of them are at the bottom, but we also changed the workflow for our users. Previously, commit was a more isolated process with a separate dialog box, and now it is embedded as a part of overall IDE flow. So, with that big change, how do we introduce it to our users? Well, we start small. We release the interface uh, change to smaller audiences at a time, and gradually increase the number of users affected by the changes, so we can incorporate the use cases better and update our suggested designs. And also, this way we can control the number of our users affected by this interface change. So, how do we do that? How do we start small? The easiest and cheapest way is uh, dog footing. Basically, you get your own colleagues to use the product with the changes. And um, we are quite lucky at JetBrains because we have about 500 developers internally that use our tools and uh, IntelliJ IDEA. Having them close by uh, makes it really easy to get qu quick feedback. And as colleagues, they usually not hesitate to tell you how they really feel about the changes. We are Slack or in corridors, corridors. Any suggested solution can be easily mocked or sometimes even implemented. And one can quickly see if it works or if it doesn't work. Dog footing in JetBrains actually confirmed that the habits are broken, but also we received a lot of feedback from the developers that although there was uh, a change of habit, it actually was more convenient and created a better workflow. So after testing it internally, we were ready to slowly release the changes to our users. And to continue to have some control of the release, we did some UX research. As many of you know, UX research is a great tool which allows you to actually see how users interact with the interface and to see what problems they have. It is quite expensive as it takes time to have the session and to analyze all of the recordings together later. So you cannot have a lot of participants taking part in the study. But at this point, it is not a problem as we are studying small, you remember? So after the study, we were able to understand that not all the habits and patterns that we were trying to save during the redesign are actually clear to the new users of the product. For example, uh, you can see here uh, two types of selection in the tree, uh, the tree with changes. Uh, one change is ticked with a checkbox and the other one is uh, simply selected with this uh, bright highlighting. Uh, and if you want to save uh, changes, um, you tick it, save and commit the change. You actually tick it and uh, click commit button. But if you don't like the change and want to revert it, you select it with the bright blue selection and click revert button here. And this was quite clear to the existing users. But all the new users did not understand the different difference and wanted the checkboxes to affect all possible actions. So, overall, through the UX research, we realized that not all habits are worth saving, because we can make uh, what can make sense to all users will not always make sense to the new users. And after this, we again expanded the release through our early access preview pro program. And uh, this program actually consists of 20,000 developers that have been loyal to our product and ready to give us feedback, but more importantly, share their use cases uh, that we might have missed during our design stage through Utrek, uh, Zendesk, social networking, you name it. Those uh, resources are actively monitored by the support engineers, developers, and product managers, basically the entire team. And uh, because of this feedback after the beta release, we actually redesigned the UI of the commit function quite drastically. 
uh, you remember it to be the horizontal pane uh, at the bottom. And we assumed um, that showing the preview of the changes in the code would be very helpful. But the design requires this pane uh, to be a horizontally, horizontal pane. However, with the horizontal layout, vertical space becomes uh, sparse very quickly. And you can see here that uh, the list of files uh, especially doesn't fit um, the place because um, especially if it's actually grouped by uh, location. Right here, only two files are actually shown. Um, and uh, also, commit message field is not that big. Well, you'd want it to be big uh, if you want to encourage users to write big and detailed commit messages. And our beta testers actually showed us that though the preview is useful, it's not needed all the time. So we removed it by default and updated the embedded panel to be vertical, which allows users to see uh, more files and more lines while typing commit message. And if you wanted to preview the changes that you made, you can still uh, do that through this uh, bigger editor space. And normally, at this point, we would be quite happy uh, to release the interface to all of the users. But with the commit interface, uh, we approach it with more caution, as it is really a big change. Also, in our beta program, we normally have more old users than uh, new ones. So we wanted to receive more feedback from the new users and decided to release the interface only to that uh, portion of the uh, our audience. As I said, uh, we have a number of IDs based on the platform, so we picked only one for the change, the most brave one, <laughs> the rider, partly because it has less uses than IntelliJ IDEA, but more importantly, um, because most of the users of the selected IDE are not as familiar with our platform uh, and um, don't have the habits connected with it. We learned very quickly that the new interface was easy to understand by the new users, so we applied this feature to all uh, new users of the platform as the default. Uh, they now have the new interface as they don't have any product-based habits yet. And feedback from that group was quite pos positive. Uh, but for old users, we actually introduced an option. We promoted uh, the new uh, UI to old users through this uh, through this banner on the top, which allows them to try out the new interface, uh, but also to go back to the old uh, interface if they uh, don't like the new experience. This gave us an idea of how many of them tried the new interface and how many of them rolled back. When many of those who opt in are not going back to the old interface, we are ready to make it a defo default to all our users in our platform. But even with the new default, we still keep the option of rolling back to the older interface as habits are quite hard to change. This also gives us information when we can actually remove the configuration altogether uh, without upsetting too many people. And to be honest, we are not quite there yet. We haven't removed the option, but this would be the last logical step. Changing habits in a mature product is a long process that requires many steps. What we've learned through this journey is that we need it to release slower as it affects too many users that have gotten used to old habits. But we really hope that we'll be able to finish this one soon. So just to remind you, this is um, how we started and this is where we are now. A simple change that would not be possible without the help of our loyal and vocal users. And uh, here, are the here is the summary of the step that we took to change the interface of the commit function in uh, the IDE. Of course, uh, we don't use all of the steps for all features that we uh, design. It would be quite cumbersome and tedious. For smaller changes, we often just uh, use dog footing and beta testing. However, in this example, we had to use all of the steps because the change affected too many users too much. Well, I hope you learned something new from me today. 
that redesigning is not just about changing a toolbar or changing an interface of a window, but in a mature product like ours with 8 million users, a simple design change is a bigger change in habit. Thank you for listening. Bye.